Hello guys, a very good morning. I hope you are all doing great. Welcome back to another very interesting video where we are going to cover a network plus terminology. So that is the latest from CompTIA Network Plus N10008. Terminology is a very important. I did IT fundamentals, I did Network Plus, I did Security Plus, I did A Plus from CompTIA and I know it is very important to understand the terminology. So if you know about the terminology, it will be easy for you to answer most of those questions in exam. So here I am just going to cover the terminology, all important terms related to Network Plus N10008. This will be helpful for all those who are preparing for N10008 or for those who want to understand networking. So here I am going to cover almost all terms which we need to know. So let's get started here. So the first term on my screen is 802.11 standard. So why they give the name 802.11? Because I guess it happened in 1980 and 2 is the Feb and this is the submitting which happened. So that's the reason they give a name like this because it happened at that time. So these are very important standards. You need to understand what is the name like Wi-Fi 1. 802.11 it started in 1997 it works with 2.4 with a speed of 2 mbps there is also wi-fi 1 that's a general name and it is 802.11b which was released in 1999 it also works with 2.4 with a speed of 11 mbps then you got wi-fi 2 802.11a started in 1999 it works with 5 gigahertz with a speed of 54 Mbps. Wi-Fi 3 which is 802.11G released on 2003. It also works with 2.4 with a speed of 54 Mbps or a Wi-Fi 4 which is 802.11N started in 2009. It works with both the frequencies. This is the most popular uh, standard. That's where you see most of the routers or wireless devices. They support the standard which has a speed of 600 Mbps. And then you got Wi-Fi 5 which is 802.11AC started in 2013. It works with 5 gigahertz with a speed of 6.93. And then Wi-Fi 6 11AX started in 2019. It works in both the frequencies with a speed of 14 Gbps. So there are a lot of books where you can see a different speed but this is uh, the value you need to remember a rough value. It could be a theoretical speed, there could be a practical speed which might be different but we need to remember it for any of those exams whether you want to go for A+, IT Fundamentals, Network+, Plus, or you want to go for Security+, Plus, you need to remember those standards. So what's the difference between 2.4 and 5 if you want to understand 2.4 has a lower data rate and a larger cover coverage area which is a good point but 5 gigahertz has a higher data rate which is a good point and then smaller coverage area. So 2.4 has a slower data transmission but 5 has a fast data transmission. 2.4 covers long distance which is very good but this 5 covers short distance. 2.4 has 14 channels here you got only uh, here, here you got more 23 channels so it has also a lot of overlapping channels that's where there'll be a lot of interference also so here there is no overlapping so these are some examples like BGAX works with 2.4 ANACX works in 5 gigahertz it gives you a rough idea if you want to choose a particular standard why should you go for 2.4 or why should you go for 5 so that's the difference 802.1p it is a method it's a quality of service process which is defined with IEEE 802.1q standard so it uses 3 bit field within the ethernet frame header to assign priority level to packets like you know give you, you give a priority for example I need to talk to you right now I also need to send you a message so whatever I'm saying right now it needs to be given more priority so voice needs more priority than whatever I'll be sending to you so that's where we can make use of this 802.1p 
so with this technique the priority value is used to differentiate traffic so what is important and what is not important what you need to give first priority <clears throat> 802.1q is a networking standard that defines VLAN on the Ethernet network VLANs are your logical networks that share a single physical connection using 802.1q uh, those tag frame an Ethernet frame can contain 802.1q tag with field that specify VLAN membership and use priority for example if you see in the diagram I got three VLANs VLAN 10 VLAN 20 VLAN 30 now if you see traffic is coming from all the VLANs through this trunk like you know you can see red traffic blue traffic and green traffic now how does this switch understand that I need to send this traffic to the VLAN 10 red traffic and then you know green traffic to VLAN 20 and blue tra traffic to VLAN 30 because of that tag it just understands that tag and it knows that this traffic should go this way this should go this way and this should go this way so that is the use of 802.1q then we got acceptable use policy so you know like you know what is the acceptable use so if you understand specific policy for a computer network that employees must sign before receiving access so if I am given if I'm being given a laptop from my organization so how I am supposed to use that or how, how I'm supposed to use the furniture or those resources or maybe the internet so acceptable use policy or we also call it acceptable usage policy or fair use policy is a set of rules which is applied by the owner or creator or administrator of a computer network or website or service that restricts the ways in which network website or system may be used and it sets guidelines as how it should be used right so if you see the terminology here it, it, it just I have just written it in a simple English so it, it is easy to understand even if you pause the video just go through the terminology what it says so it should be easy to understand access control list so this is also what we call selective restriction what you are restricting or what you are allowing so it's a selective restriction so it's just restricting someone selectively so for example these are some users so based on their role they will have their access for example this user might have access to server 1 this user might have access to server 2 and server 3 so based on what role they have so access control list is a list of rules that specifies which users or system are granted or denied access to a particular object or system resource access control list are also installed in routers or switch where they act as a filter managing which traffic can access the network like select restriction what should be allowed what should not be allowed this is your access control vestibule so a man trap security man portal this is also known as airlock sally port or access control vestibule it is a physical security access control system which has a small space with two set of interlocking doors such that the first set of door must close before the other door is going to open for example if you see uh, you know one employee is trying to pass through this man trap she's using her access card so when if, if she's authorized this door is going to open and she can just get inside and here is a biometric system which is going to recognize her if she's authorized so if she's authorized then this door is going to open so she can come out if she's not authorized it is go no it's not going to open but this door is will also close so she will be kept in this trap and it's going to send alarm to the admin so admin is going to then verify so it's going to protect from those piggybacking and tailbacking uh, uh, tailgating attacks so upon authorized credential the door is going to open overhead system scans the compartment to ensure single access you know to prevent from piggybacking and tailgating attacks now access point you might have seen that it, it could be a soft access point it could be also a hard access point it might be a set up in your phone also which is a soft access point so it could be a function of a router also but what access point does so access point is going to connect those wireless devices to your wired network so there's already an internet here so you're just sharing this internet with those wireless devices that is the use of access point in computer networking a wireless access point this is also called wireless access point 
or more generally just access point is a networking hardware device that allows other Wi-Fi devices to connect to a wired network. Ad hoc network in case of wireless there are two designs one is infrastructure so infrastructure makes use of access point but in ad hoc there is no access point so you might be connecting them with the help of maybe Bluetooth right so a wireless ad hoc network or mobile ad hoc network is a decentralized type of wireless network the network is ad hoc because it does not rely on a pre-existing infrastructure such as a router in the wired network or access point in a wireless network right so there's no access point there's a peer-to-peer -peer connection address resolution protocol is the mapping of your Mac and IP addressing so when there's a request coming from outside to your router, uh, maybe to your PC, so it just sends a broadcast. Hey, whoever has IP address of 2.3, please send me a Mac because I need to send you a frame which will be supposed to be uh, taken or which, which will just go through the switch because switch understands those frames. So the ARP address resolution protocol is a communication protocol used for discovering the link layer address such as a Mac address associated with a given internet layer address like IPv4 address this is critical function in the internet protocol suite so if you see here sender is going to send a broadcast you know through the, so through the is going to send a message hey I am looking for 4.2 whoever is 4.2 please please let me know so that means I know your IP so please give me your Mac okay it goes as a broadcast if you see here so receiver says yes it is me my IP is this or my Mac is this please take it you know this is a reply hey this is me my Mac is this right so when you send an ARP request you are asking hey I know your IP or whoever is this IP so please send me a Mac others are going to just simply ignore this message but only you this is your Mac so you'll say yes this is me please take my Mac so it's a mapping of IP and Mac addressing network it's a unique identifier for a network node such as a Mac IPv4 or IPv6 so if you see the difference MAC address is a unique identifier which is assigned to a NIC card of the computing device but IP address is a numerical label which is assigned to each device connected to a computer network that uses IP internet protocol for communication this stands for media access control this stands for internet protocol address this is also called physical address hardware address or Ethernet address this is also called logical address network address or internet address this helps to uniquely identify the device this helps to identify the connection of a device on that internet so that means this IP can change it is your identity at that point of time but this is your permanent identity so this is like your permanent address and this is like your temporary address where you stay right now so this is assigned by the device manufacturer this is assigned by the ISP or the admin it cannot be changed nowadays people use some other techniques like Mac cloning uh, yes it is possible but it's a little bit difficult but this cannot this can be changed it's a 48 bit hexa hexadecimal long this is 32 bit for IPv4 and uh, 128 bit for IPv6 this works at data link layer and this works at the network layer of OSM model so if you see in the OSM model there's seven layers we'll, we'll take that administrative distance means how much trusty or trustworthy a particular route is so if I have those many routes configured in my router now which route to follow will be based on the administrative distance lower the number higher the priority so directly connected is given more priority static route is given priority one internal EIGRP enhanced interior gateway routing protocol is given a priority of 90 open shortest path first a priority of 110 routing information protocol 120 unknown is 255 so that means if there are multiple route configured in my router I will always choose this one if this doesn't work I'll choose this one so administrative distance is a feature that routers use in order to select the best path when there are two or more different route to the same destination from two different routing protocols administrative distance defines the reliability of a routing protocol antenna type so there are a lot of antenna types specially arranged metal wires that can send and receive radio signals typically implemented as either an omnidirectional which works in all the directionals 
or a unidirectional one direction like you know these are some types of antennas like whip or monopole antenna it works best for narrow range and can be collapsible like this used on small radio and vehicles you might have seen that or there is a dipole two monopoles facing away from each other it is used to create a powerful signal in a restricted space or a Yagi antenna this is ideal for long distance range and directional applications can reach multiple frequencies or a loop antenna works like a dipole and can reach multiple frequencies this is commonly used for TV and RFID signals or systems bow tie antenna is another type of dipole which uh, angles can be set to work well with different frequencies or a dish antenna it has a large uh, surface here to collect a lot of signal it works well for high frequencies TV and sound so these are some types of antennas common antennas what is any cost so with the help of IPv6 or with the uh, uh, we, 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 when, 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 when IPv6 is getting implemented so this is very important concept so what you do with any cost you are going to give um, those servers the same IP multiple servers are given the same IP so if you need to communicate you will always communicate with the nearest one so in any cost a collection of servers share the same IP address and send data from source to the server that is topographically the closest this helps cut down on latency and bandwidth cost improves the load time for users it also improves availability so there are a lot of uh, advantage you might have already seen unicast broadcast multicast there's also any cast which is one to the nearest application specific integrated circuit so a chip like this which is specially designed for a specific purpose so ASIC is an integrated circuit chip which is customized for a particular use rather than unintended for general purpose use for example a chip which is designed to run in a digital voice recorder or a high efficiency video codec is an example of ASIC application specific IC ARP command so when you do ARP command so what is ARP we have already seen it is a mapping of your Mac and IP so when you do a command like this you are going to get a table of your Mac and IP entry because sometimes attackers might do Mac spoofing Mac poisoning so that's where you need to check if a particular IP is mapping to that particular uh, Mac address whether it is proper or not if there is any kind of a mapping which is not correct you can check that in ARP table with the help of this command so ARP is a layer 2 protocol used to map a Mac to IP address all host on a network are located by their IP but NIC cards do not have IP they have Mac so ARP is the protocol used to associate the IP to Mac address <coughs> asymmetric routing so what is asymmetric routing for example you send a request uh, packet through this path but the reply comes through a different path so it is not symmetric so asymmetric routing a packet traverses from a source to a destination in one path and takes a different path when it returns to the source this is commonly seen in layer 3 routed network like you know a physical data network so if you see in the OSI model we have physical data network transport session presentation and application auto MDIX so what is auto MDIX if you see here if you need to connect two similar devices you need a cross cable but if it is two dissimilar devices maybe you need a straight cable because what happens here why you need a cross because this guy sends a, at, at it transmits at pin 1 this guy also transmits at pin 1 so if you connect a straight cable what will happen this is going to transmit this is also going to transmit so there will be a collision so that's why this guy if this, if this guy transmits here other guys should receive here that's why you need a cross cable so if one sends other should receive so what happens in auto so earlier what happened we used to uh, connect those cables uh, uh, we, we, we were making some mistake where we did not connect those cables properly maybe I was supposed to connect straight but I connected cross so that is where you know there was a problem so with the help of auto MDX even if you make a mistake you don't need to worry this is going to change those pins automatically so whatever cable you connect is not a problem with auto MDX so when auto MDX is enabled 
the interface automatically detects the required cable connection type whether it should be straight or cross and configures the connection appropriately. A PIPA is your automatic private IP address. <coughs> so what is this address? For example, if there's a problem with your uh, DHCP server, if you are not able to connect your DHCP server properly, then you are going to get this address in this reg. This is what we call automatic private IP address. So, a PIPA is a feature in operating systems such as Windows that enable computers to automatically self-configure an IP address. Self-configure an IP address and subnet mask when their DHCP server is uh, not reachable. So the IP address range for a PIPA is 169.254 with the subnet mask of this. So if you uh, do IP config and if you get an IP of 169.254 that means your uh, PC is not able to communicate with the DHCP server or there's a problem with your DHCP server. Autonomous system. So what is autonomous system? So if you see these are multiple autonomous systems. So autonomous system is, uh, is a network or a collection of networks that are all managed and supervised by a single entity or organization as an AS is heterogeneous network typically governed by large enterprise. An AS has many different subnetworks with combined routing logic and common routing policies. Maybe in this AS it has a common routing logic and common routing uh, protocol so if you see those routers it's going to connect AS1 with AS3 right one is getting connected with 3 and 3 is connect getting connected with 2 so there is a specific identity a an identification number so you'll come to know that this traffic is coming from that particular autonomous system or your router knows at least so if you see a badge reader so what is a badge reader so if you see a badge reader you know in your organization when you swap your card your uh, smart card it's going to read that data so a device which is designed to read information which is encoded into a small plastic card it is often part of a data collection system in which each operator can be identified by a badge they present to the machine <coughs> bandwidth so if you see here this is a low bandwidth and this is high bandwidth so bandwidth is the capacity so network bandwidth is a measure of the data transfer rate or capacity of a given network it is a crucial network measurement for understanding the speed and quality of a network bandwidth is commonly measured in bits per second so how many bits you are sending per second so now what's the difference between good put throughput and bandwidth bandwidth is the capacity right so the amount of data that can possibly flow so it's a capacity for a given system to transfer data over a connection throughput is the average rate of successful message delivery or a communication channel so amount of data that can be actually transmitted but now what is good put so good put is the actual data because what you do there are a lot of errors there are a lot of uh, most of the times you need to resend those frames so what is the actual usable data if you try to exclude those errors retransmissions that is the actual data that is the that is what we call good put so good put is the application level throughput it's a number of useful bits per unit of time forwarded by network from a certain source address to a certain destination so you're going to ex exclude those protocol overhead you're going to exclude those retransmitted data packets so that is the actual you know that's the actual or usable data which is good put bandwidth tester so most of the times you go to browser go to speedtest.net or fast.com and you're going to check your speed right so a bandwidth test measures the maximum bandwidth of a network or an internet connection the figure obtained from the bandwidth test is usually represented in megabytes per second mbps or kilobytes per second now here this is megabits per second but megabyte would be mb so b would be capital and this is megabits small is bits and capital is bytes so megabits per second megabytes per second 
bandwidth test results could vary from time to time and depend on many factors however it can give a theoretical figure for an average bandwidth speed for a network or internet right it can uh, it can vary even if you run a lot of tools like you know twowire.com speedtest.net or maybe fast.com you might see there'll be a little bit of difference but it just gives you an overview or an idea what's your speed biometric authentication so biometric authentication involves using some part of your physical mac makeup to authenticate you this could be your fingerprint it could be iris scan it could be retina scan or some other physical characteristic a single char characteristic or multiple characteristics could be used here but when we do mfa we use multiple factors so like you know fingerprint scanners facial recognition voice recognition eye scanners so this is very difficult to duplicate but still people duplicate it attackers do that but it is little difficult to duplicate botnet so what is botnet bot is a zombie net is a network of zombies so what do you do you have actually uh, an attacker uh, you know has actually got an access to a kind of a group of those bots where he can make them to do anything so a botnet is a collection of internet connected devices which may include personal computers servers mobile devices and iot devices that are infected and controlled by a common type of malware often un be known as to the owner I infected device are controlled remotely by threat actor often cyber criminals and are often used for specific function yet malicious operations stay hidden from the user so botnets are commonly used to send spam mails engage in click fra fraud campaigns or they can generate malicious traffic so mostly they are being used to do ddos attacks right now where you can make or use of those tools like slowris pyris are you dead at rudy you may make use of LOIC, HOIC, or you can use HPing3 to do those attacks. So first is the infection phase, then is the connection phase, then you get a control as an attacker, then you do the multiplication. So that happens in a botnet. Bottleneck, like in a bottle there's a neck, this is going to decide your speed. No matter there's a lot of traffic coming in, but this is going to be a hindrance here. So what's a bottleneck? So bottleneck occurs in a network when there are too many users attempting to access a specific resource internet bottlenecks provide artificial and natural network choke points to inhabit certain set of users from overloading the entire network by consuming too much of that bandwidth bring your own device so sometimes you bring your own device your personal device and use it within the organization so there are also BYOD policies bring your own device also called bring your own technology bring your own phone bring your own personal computer refers to being allowed to use one's personal own device rather than being required to use an officially provided device so you're going to use your personal device for the benefit of your organization sometimes they also pay you for that depends on the policy what is broadcast broadcast is one to all so when you send a message from one to all that is broadcast so in computer networking broadcasting refers to transmitting a packet that will be received by every device on the network in practice the scope of broadcast is limited to a broadcast domain so a domain is you know all the devices which are within that domain that means if you send a broadcast all those devices within that domain will be able to hear that so if you see the source mac the destination is a broadcast because fff is a broadcast at layer 2 it says to all servers i want to obtain an ip address so the router reads the message since it is sent to the broadcast address router is a server and it will reply back the computer also reads the message since it is sent to the broadcast address computer is not a dcp server and it is simply going to discard the packet Now broadcast domain so what is a broadcast domain so that means if you send a broadcast from this device this device can hear it this device can hear it this can hear it this can hear it everyone can hear it because they are in a same broadcast domain so if there's a device somewhere here this guy will not hear because it is not in that particular domain so a broadcast domain is a logical division of computer network in which all nodes can reach each other by broadcasting at the data layer a broadcast domain can be within the same LAN segment or it can be bridged 
to other LAN segments also. Sometimes the routers can forward the broadcast as a unique cast. Otherwise, routers will not do it. But if you have a kind of, you know, maybe your uh, DHCP server is in some other network, so as a relay agent, it might send it. But normally, routers will not forward those broadcasts. So, what is a brute force? A brute force is a kind of an attack. So, it is an attempt to discover a password by systematically trying every possible combination of letters, numbers, symbols until you discover the one correct combination that works. If your website requires user authentication, you are a good target for a brute force attack. So, how it works? Attacker is going to guess a list of username and password combinations. Attacker is going to repeat the login attempt until one is successful. Successful, so that's where he'll be able to break your passwords. It is the most effective technique, but it's going to take a lot of time. Other, otherwise, you can use uh, dictionary attacks, you can use hash injections, you can use uh, those rainbow tables. Bus topology. Bus topology is also known as a line topology. It's a type of network topology in which all device in network are connected by one central RJ45 network cable or coaxial cable. The single cable where all data is transmitted between devices is referred to as a bus, a backbone or trunk. We are talking about this cable. Okay, So all the devices are connected here. There is a terminator so signal does not uh, come out and then if there is a break in the signal that's where this whole network will be affected. Cable crimper. So crimping is a tool is a device used to conjoin two pieces of metal by deforming one or both of them to hold each other. The result of tools work is called crimp. Example of crimping is where you fix a connector to the end of cable. You might have seen that when you connect RJ45 connector that's where you cut the cable then you try to insert those eight wires in that uh, that cap that RJ45. So this is how a crimper looks like. This is your cable modem. So if you see in the cable modem what you have you have a splitter because you might have telephone signals and internet signals. You have a power supply you have the connection which is coming from ISP through the wall check then you are just sending this maybe you are just connecting one PC uh, with the help of this cable or maybe you have a Wi-Fi where you can just connect some wireless devices so a cable modem is a device that connects a computer system to the internet through cable television network cable internet technology allows for the transfer rate as high as 30 Mbps because earlier if you uh, remember those dial-up connections where the speed was only 56 mbps now uh, 56 uh, kbps now you have a speed of uh, speed in mbps earlier we used to have it in kbps now in fact we have in, in we need it in gbps also sometimes uh, you can do uh, stripping with the crimper also but you may also need a separate tool where you are going to remove that extra cable from the wire because you need to kind of connect uh, you need to uncover those small uh, cables here uh, that's where you just remove that jacket with the help of this uh, cable stripper so tool for stripping the cable jacket or wire insulator wire insulator Cable tester, so this is where you insert those cables here and all those lights will uh, come up so you will come to know that everything is fine. If some of the light is not lighting up, that's where you will come to know that this particular connector has a problem. So it is not connected properly in that RJ45 connector. So cable testers verify the electrical connection in a single cable confirming things are wired correctly between the ends of the cable. Campus area networks earlier we used to have LAN, MAN, WAN, now also but there are some other terms like CAN, LAN, MAN, HAN, WAN. So campus area network, metropolitan area network, there is a global area network, there is a home area network, there is a body area network, there is a personal area network. So campus means it is within the campus like you know you are connecting those buildings, maybe different buildings within your college or campus. So a scope defining a network with direct connections between two or more buildings within the same overall area. So you are just connecting, maybe your university is connecting those different colleges together with the help of CAN. 
kept your portal if you go to airport you will be able to see the screen when you connect that uh, Wi-Fi so web page or website to which a client is redirected before being granted full access maybe they want to uh, accept some payment maybe they want to check what is the health of your device maybe they uh, need to collect your email address that's where you have this capital portal kept you portal channel is a band or of, of RF used for the wireless communication each IEEE wireless standard specifies the channel that can be used for example a we have seen you know a b g and n like you know 2.4 or 5 so this is your classless interdomain routing when you represent uh, that that subnet mask in the help of with the help of slash so slash is the number of ones for example these are one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two okay one two three four five six okay so there are six ones here okay so eight plus eight plus six gives you twenty two that's why we say it to so it is not a default subnet mask but it is customized subnet mask when you do subnetting so <clears throat> CIDR which stands for classless interdomain routing is an IP addressing scheme that improves the allocation of IP addresses it replaces the old based on you know old old scheme where we have uh, those based on the classes this scheme also help greatly extend the life of IP4 as well as slow the growth of routing tables client server okay so if you see these guys here these are the clients okay and there's a server here okay so server is going to maybe maybe you know you know you connect to a Google server so you are a client so you need some uh, maybe you need some resource from the server so administrative paradigm where some host machines are designated as providing server and services and other machines are designated as client devices that consume those services from those servers cloud deployment model so in the cloud there these are the different deployment models so classifying the ownership and management of a cloud at either being public private cloud or community cloud or hybrid cloud for example if you see public cloud it typically has a massive amount of data space which translates into easy scalability recommended for software development and collaboration uh, collaborative project if you see a private cloud it usually reside behind a firewall and are utilized by a single organization this is recommended for business with a very tight regulatory requirement if they are concerned with security hybrid is going to combine public with private to allow the two platform to interact seamlessly it is recommended for business balancing big data analytics with strict data privacy regulations or a community cloud it's a collaborative multi-tenant platform used by several distinct organizations to share some applications users are typically operating within some industry or field for example you have maybe some bank bank one trying to connect with bank two trying to connect with bank three so they might be making use of that community cloud or some universities getting connected <coughs> sorry so what is clustering so clustering means they work together as a group so load balancing technique where a group of servers are configured as a unit and they work together to provide network services for example if you see node 1 is primary node and this is a secondary node if this node fails this node will come to know and it's going to act as a primary node because they will check each other's health with the help of heartbeat coaxial cable because there is a coax you know these insulator and those conductors they are sharing the same axis that's why we say coaxial it has a copper wire there's an insulation there's a copper mesh there's outside insulation so coaxial cable or coax is a type of electrical cable consisting of inner connector surrounded by concentric conducting shield with two separated by a dielectric many coaxial cables also have protective outer sheath or jacket you know as an insulator so different types of sites if your primary site fails you need to choose a site now there are different types of sites there's a cold site in that there's a little or no equipment there is no network connectivity 
this is not ready for automatic failover because there is no data synchronization there's a high risk of data loss but this is cheap so warm site is partially written in equipment network connectivity is enabled failover occurs within hours or maybe it, it might take days also there's a daily or weekly data synchronization there's a minimum data loss this is cost effective hot site is fully written in equipment network connectivity is enabled failover occurs within hours or days it has a near real time data synchronization this is zero data loss and it is a very expensive now you can choose based on your requirement so it's a predetermined alternate location where a network can be rebuilt if there's a disaster so which site to choose will be based on your requirement what is your RTO what's your RPO what's your WRT what is your MTD what is your uh, uh, MTTR what's your you know uh, all those all those metrics collision domain we have already seen the broadcast domain now what's a collision domain so if these guys send data at the same time when there's a collision so all those devices in this domain they'll be able to hear this collision so a collision domain is defined as a single carrier sense multiple access collision detection network in which there will be a collision if two or two stations attached to a system transmit at the same time each port on a bridge or switch determines a collision domain so if you have a five port switch so that means you have five collision domains co-location data center so sometimes there's a third party which is going to take care of your data center they will take care of cooling they will take care of security and everything hardening and all so this is a third party so deploying private servers network appliance and interconnects to a hosted data center facility which is shared with other customers command and control so attacker gets access to command and control center here so where he is going to uh, th th this is a botnet right these are zombies so this is a botnet so he is going to control those bots with this command and control center so infrastructure of host and servers with which attacker direct distribute and control malware or botnets this is also called c2 command and control common vulnerability and exposure so what is this if you go to Google and search for CVE you will see a database where you are going to find more about the vulnerabilities with the ID because every vulnerability has an ID like this so this shows you identical for each ID there's a four digit year of publication and there is ongoing four five or seven digits numbering so it's a scheme for identifying vulnerabilities which is developed by MITRE and adopted by NIST convergence when you say routers have reached to convergence so that means all the routers will have the same routing table right so update my routing table update my routing table so when all the routers will have the same routing table we say they have reached at convergence so process whereby routers agree on route through the network to establish same network topology in their routing table which is a steady state the time taken to reach steady state is a measure of routing protocols convergence performance so uh, it, it all depends like you know how good uh, how, how, how much less time it takes for the routers to convergence so that is how good a routing protocol is so it should take less time for routers to reach convergence we have already discussed about straight and cross cable so what is a straight or what's a cross cable so this is a straight cable like there's a standard if you have standard A on one end A on other end or B on one end B on other end so same standard on both the ends gives you a straight cable but cross one is A and one is B so that's a cross cable so cabling where transmit pair at one end is connected to receiving pair at other end because what you do here you have transmit and here what you have you have a receiver okay here also you have transmit and here you have receiver now here you have transmit and here you have receiver here you have transmit here you have receiver so one side transmits other side should receive crosstalk is a phenomena where by one wire causes interference in another as a result of their close proximity so these wires are very close so what will happen if there's any kind of signal going through this so this interference might affect this cable like you know someone you're, you're, you're talking to someone over the phone and there is someone who, who is also using mobile phone nearby so that's going to cause some kind of disturbance to you so same thing happens here data link layer this is the second layer of OSM model 
so data comes from the network layer goes to data link layer and goes to a physical layer back to the data, data link layer so this is the sender and this is the receiver so what does data link layer do it deals with frames so frame has a MAC address right so that means switch work here at layer 2 switch there's also a layer 3 switch which works like a router so OSL layer responsible for transferring data between nodes this is also called layer 2 DLP is your data leak or data uh, data loss prevention people say data loss prevention but it is actually a data leak prevention because loss is where you also protect that original copy is not lost but leak is when sensitive data goes outside so that's what it does so it protect against malicious insider looking to exfiltrate or send sensitive data outside you are going to comply with industry regulations like GDPR you can prevent ransom from infiltrating the network you can minimize risk of data breach you can protect employees against accidental data loss you can also improve data security in the supply chain so software solution that detect and prevent sensitive information from being stored on unauthorized system or transmitted or unauthorized networks data remnant so data what is left so what is data remnants and how to prevent that risk so left or information on a storage medium even after basic attempts have been made to remove that data so when you try to remove the data but whatever is left after that it's what what we call left or is the remnant data data center is a facility dedicated to provisioning of reliable power it has some environmental controls it has network fabric to serve computers default gateway like your router so if you see here this is my system with an IP default gateway is my router because it just connects me with the outside world because I call it a, a, a default gateway because whenever I need to communicate with anyone so I will send that traffic through this default gate IP configuration parameter that identifies address of a router on a local subnet that host can use to contact other networks default route entry in the routing table to represent the forwarding path that will be used if no other entry are matched so I, I'll just choose a route if there is no route it is going to follow this uh, by default you know saying that you know IP route 000, 000 so I'm just saying it go to go to go to anywhere okay go to any network anywhere through this 3.1 okay through this 3.1 or through this so I'm just telling to my okay if you need to go outside I don't have a proper route just follow this route this is a default route default VLAN where a VLAN ID is one for all unconfigured switch ports so by default all these PCs will be put in a default VLAN so VLAN 1 is a default VLAN unless and until you configure them so you just go to VLAN and then you just attach those ports you know add them to a particular VLAN but by default they are in VLAN 1 which is a default VLAN defense in depth so what is defense in depth it's a security strategy that position the layers of network security as network traffic uh, roadblock each layer is intended to slow an attackers progress rather than eliminating the outright so what happens here you have multiple layers for example if you see your data here so at a data layer you have a database you need to secure a database you need to secure a content and message security then at the application layer you can do single sign-on authentication and authorization to make it sure that right users have access at the host you can do uh, uh, you know updates patching and all and in the internal network you know for your routers and all you can <coughs> set up firewalls IDS IPS at the perimeter also you can set up firewalls VPNs and all that at a physical layer you can make it sure that you have a proper lock you have a proper fence security guards and all and at the pulse and procedures you need to make it sure that you have strong policies so all together what happens you have multiple layers of security <coughs> demarcation point so you might have seen there's an internet connection and there's a demark and this is your insider wiring so this is also what we call minimum point of entry so because what happens you are getting an internet connection let's assume this is from AT&T okay this is the customer so now when there's a problem with the cable so those guys will tell you hey Jack if there's any problem with this cable up to this point I'm going to fix it but if there's a problem anywhere here inside you have to fix it 
so location that represent the end of the access provider's network and therefore their responsibility for maintaining it demark point is also called as minimum point of entry if routing equipment cannot be installed at this location demark extension cable may need to be laid so it just shares the responsibility what is your responsibility what is my responsibility <coughs> so what is dos when there is a single attacker ddos when you have a lot of volume because there are multiple attackers because what attacker does attacker is going to make use of multiple zombies but here in dos there is a single attacker so the volume is less a type of physical application or network attack that affect the availability of a managed resource so we just try to overload the server now we have we are putting a lot of load through multiple attacks that's why you know we have a ddos because ddos is very effective because servers are very uh, kind of you know uh, advanced nowadays so if you remember in the previous slide i said you cannot forward those dhcp request but what do you do if you have a server for example this guy needs an ip address but server is in a different network so what happens router is not going to send this request so that's why you make use of relay agent so relay agent is going to send the broadcast and convert that to the unicast and send it to that particular server so configuration of a router to forward dhcp traffic where client and server are on a different subnet you might also use IP helper in Cisco a command DSP snooping so what is snooping so snooping is a kind of protection mechanism because if you see this computer here it is connected to a switch now this switch knows that this is a trusted port because on this port is a server connected now if this guy comes here saying hey mr. switch I am a server so switch says no I don't I know you're not a server because server is connected here because that is trusted port so if this guy says I'm a server, he says no, I don't trust. Okay, so switch port protection mechanism that block DSP offer from unauthorized sources. Dictionary attack. So we have discussed those attacks. It's a type of password attack which compares encrypted password against a predetermined list of possible password values. So what is dictionary attack? Hackers generate a list of common passwords to try against vulnerable accounts. Hackers generate a list of complex passwords to try against vulnerable accounts. And that's the difference between brute force and dictionary. It takes less time, brute force takes more time. It is adaptable based on the location, so you can create a dictionary based on that location, but it requires advanced password cracking software. So that's a, that's a difference. Dig command, so when you do dig.google.com, so what you're doing, you're just getting the domain details. So domain information grouper is a flexible tool where you integrate a DNS server, it does DNS lookup is going to display the answer that are written from that queried name server. So what is a digital certificate? If you see here, this is a certificate which is, which is issued by a certificate authority. So verifies the identity of the holder. It provides the public key of the holder to facilitate encrypted signature. Digital signature of CA validates the authenticity and integrity. So someone gives you a certificate to your website. If you, if I connect to your website, you are going to give me that certificate, so I, I, I can trust your website, because Google says, or or maybe Amazon says, hey Sheikh, you can trust this guy because I am trusting him. So I will be trusting you based on that third party, which is a digital certificate. So identification and authentication information presented in X dot. 509 format and issued by a certificate authority as a guarantee that a key pair as identified by public key embedded in the certificate is valid for a particular subject it's because in the certificate there's a key pair which is being signed by the certificate authority so you're sharing your public key with me so I'll be encrypting that dry uh, that data so there's a kind of encryption between you and me whatever I'll be sending you only you can read that DSL is your digital subscriber line so like a DSL modem so if you see it similar to cable modem you have a DSL modem there's an Ethernet cable connect to a computer there's also a connection coming from ISP your 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 uh, van port or van connection so carrier technology to implement a broadband internet access for subscribers by transferring data over voice grade telephone line there are various types of DSL like you know there's a symmetric and asymmetric so symmetric means same upload and download but in asymmetric maybe 
upload is less than download or maybe download is uh, you know upload is less download is more because maybe you need a lot of you, you you're not uploading more data but you're just downloading more data that's why they give you more download speed so ddos is attack that involved the use of infected internet connected computers and device to disrupt the normal flow of traffic of a server or service by overwhelming the target so here you are sending a lot of th those packets so here in DOS there's only one attacker but in DDoS there's a there's a single attacker but he's going to make use of those uh, botnets or zombies multiple bots so the volume is more here DNS is a server service that maps FQDN to IP address for example when you say uh, to your computer what's the IP address for this site it says I don't know but root server knows and you go to root server hey root server do you know what's the IP of this site it says I don't know but dot com knows because it is something dot com example dot com okay it's when you go to dot com it says I don't know but example dot com knows so it's an authority to server or this is the authority it says I don't know but beta knows right so this gives the IP then you store that in a cache so that's what DNS does this is your dotted decimal notation IPv4 is represented in dotted decimal notation this is a decimal and this is the binary so there are dots these are octets each one is 8 8 uh, bytes that's why we say IPv4 is 32 8 4s are 32 so format for expressing IPv4 addresses using four decimal values from 0 to 255 for each octet because 2 to the power 8 gives you 256 because we start with 0 that's where we go with 255 duplex is a network link that allows interface to send and receive simultaneously so when you send and receive data at the same time like you know you're talking to someone over the phone you can say something the other person can also say at the same time so you can s listen and talk at the same time that's duplex DSCP gives you an IP address uh, if you're uh, if you need an IP address you might use a static IP or you will you'll be getting IP from the DSCP server so it's a protocol used to automatically assign IP address information to host that have not been configured manually so what you do you just discover for the server server will give you an offer hey shake please take this IP okay and you're going to say to server hey server I accept this offer please give me IP give me subnet mask give me default gateway give me DNS server and other settings and then server is going to acknowledge that so this process is what we call discover offer request acknowledgement DORA process dynamic route entry in the routing table that has been learned from another router through a dynamic routing protocol so either you do a static routing you configure the route or the router is going to learn from other routers because if this route fails so they are going to configure other route so routers will share routing table with each other so they are going to learn from other routers also called learn route enumeration attack that aims to list resource on the network host or system as a whole to identify potential target for further attack so what do you do in enumeration you are going to get the details you have a direct connect with the target now you're just understanding what's the name what are the services what is the network map user groups on the computer what's the routing protocol operating system so you're just getting more details that's what we call enumeration you're enumerating Ethernet is a standard, it's a traditional technology for connecting device in a wide LAN or, w or WAN. It enables devices to communicate with each other through a protocol which is set of rules or common network language, like you know, a standard. So you have an Ethernet switch, you have an Ethernet cable, you have Ethernet ports and all. It's a standard. Evil Twin happens in a wireless where you have a kind of an attacker. So what attacker does, so there's a legitimate, a legitimate access point, he's going to set up a similar or similar looking access point so wireless access point that de deceives users into believing that it's a legitimate network for example if I say Microsoft so if this is a real access point name if I want to create a fake one I can create like this so when you see this access point you will be able to connect you think it's a Microsoft but there's a ch catch here like right? it looks similar to Microsoft explicit deny so firewall access rule configured manually to block any traffic matched by a previous rule so if you allow everything at last you need to deny that's what we call default deny so allow everyone so for example I want to allow uh, Rick I want to allow shake I want to allow uh, maybe uh, Sam and rest I will block everyone else 
that's explicit deny so what is exploit an exploit is a piece of software a check of data or a sequence of commands that take advantage of a bug or vulnerability in the application or a system to cause unintended or unanticipated behavior to occur so exploit is when you when you try to get inside the system the name comes from english verb to exploit means to use something to one's advantage exploiting someone right so using someone you, even if you do a social engineering you make use of that you know you do exploit so you you try to make use of someone uh, to, to, to take you, you, you take advantage of someone for your personal use exterior gateway protocol happens here which is going to connect those autonomous systems so this is the interior gateway protocol which happens within the autonomous system if you want to connect those autonomous systems you might be using EGP which is like a BGP border gateway protocol dynamic routing protocol used to exchange information about network path in separate autonomous system <coughs> f-type connector is used with coaxial cable so guys there was a question in exam so you think it's a, a connector for fiber optic but it's a connector for coaxial cable factory reset it's a standard routine created by manufacturer that can be invoked to restore and uh, to restore an application to its shipped state clearing any user configuration so when you reset something you just bring it back to factory settings so this is a fat access point and thin access point fat, ac fat access point does not need anyone to control but thin access point needs a controller so access point whose firmware contains enough processing logic to a to be able to function autonomously and handle client without the use of a wireless controller so like you know these are fat access point they don't they don't need a controller FTP is your file transfer protocol it's a standard communication protocol used for transfer of computer files from a server to client on a computer network FTP is built on a client server model architecture using separate control and data connection between the client and server like you know FTP client and FTP server firewall is a software or hardware device that protects a system or network by blocking unwanted network traffic like you know what should be allowed what should be blocked like you know this traffic is blocked here this traffic is allowed flow control is a mechanism defined in IEEE 802.3a that allows a server to instruct a switch to pause traffic temporarily to avoid overwhelming its buffer like you know you just tell to this guy hey can you please slow down because I cannot process all those packets or my buffer is already full so you're just controlling that flow of traffic fragmentation so what is fragmentation it's a mechanism where you break a, a kind of a packet into multiple packets into multiple or you break a frame into multiple part it's a big frame so what you do you divide that into multiple fragments so why you do that most of the times your uh, particular channel might not accept those big frames or maybe attackers purposely do this attack because firewall may try to they, they try to bypass those firewalls and ideas so this is a frame it's a common term for protocol at data layer link layer you know we have already discussed data link layer uh, you know where we have a frame which has a MAC address source MAC and destination MAC apart from that it has a type and data so which is a data coming from the network layer which is IP packets and FCS is to check those errors frequency band portion of radio frequency spectrum in which wireless products operate like you know 2.4 and 5 so like you know you can see different frequencies here where different devices work with different frequencies so that's why you have a radio where you need to uh, set that frequency to receive those particular signals full tunnel is a VPN configuration while traffic is routed through a VPN gateway so when you talk about full tunnel that means all the traffic goes through this there's also split tunnel it's not going to send all the traffic it will only send sensitive traffic or important traffic FQDN this is what we call FQDN like you know protocol there's a subdomain there's a domain name there's a top level domain so it's a unique label specified in a DNS hierarchy to identify a particular host within a subdomain within a top level domain Fusion splicer, you might have seen that used uh, to connect those wires if there's a cut with your fiber optic. It's a tool for joining those strands of fiber optic cables with a minimal signal loss. Geofencing, where you draw a virtual boundary. So security control that can enforce a virtual boundary based on real world geography. So what happens, for example, this is your organization and when someone is trying to enter your organization, you can send them an alert 
a particular offer right when you go to a shopping mall GSM is a standard for cellular radio communication and data transfer GSM phones use a SIM card to identify a subscriber and network provider 4G and later data standards are developed for GSM you know this right this is simple hardening so what is system hardening it's a process of making a host or app configuration security by reducing its attack surface running only and necessary services installing monitoring software to protect against malware and intrusion and establishing a maintenance schedule to ensure the system is patched to be secure against software exploits hash you know when you calculate someone's hash so you use an algorithm here like SHA or maybe MDA so you calculate a fixed value so function that converts an arbitrary length string into a fixed length string output a cryptographic hash function does this in a way that reduces the chance of collision so collision is where two different inputs produce the same output also called message digest this is also called hash or MD5 or, or message digest heat map you know you have a heat map is going to send you where there's a more signal strength so in Wi-Fi site survey a diagram showing signal strength and channel utilization for example if you say green it shows very good yellow shows okay red shows no signal so that's why you know when you need to set up those Wi-Fi or if you see there is no signals you use a heat map HVAC is your heating ventilation and air conditioning control system that maintain optimum heating cooling and humidity level working environment for different parts of the building high availability is a metric that defines how closely system approach the goal of providing data availability 100% of the time maintaining high level of system performance like you know, it's highly available so there's a low or little downtime honeypot is a host network or file setup with the purpose of luring attackers away from assets of actual value and or discovering attack strategies and weakness in a security configuration also called honey net or a honey file like you know you just set up a trap so attacker thinks he's attacking your service but it's a trap where you can just cache and you can do a research or you can protect the actual resource so guys if you remember here I'm just taking all the terminology based on the alphabetical order right now I started with A now I reached to H H A, a B C D F G H now I have to go to I J K L M N O P K R S T U V W X Y Z okay till Z till Z or Z hop is like you know if you see from here to here there's one hop okay two hop three hop okay so one leak in the path from a host to a router or from router to router each time a packet passes through a router it is hop count is decreased by one TTL value is decreased by one time to live how long a packet can live in a network so there is no loop host name is a label applied to a host computer that is unique on a, ne a local network like you know you have a host name which you can change hybrid topology so it is an integration of two or more different topologies to make a resilient topology with many advantage or disadvantage of that particular topology so what you do you maybe connect this ring with a star this is your hybrid topology you take advantage of both of them of course there will be also disadvantage coming along with this but you take advantage of you know those benefits of those topologies HTTP is your hypertext transfer protocol so when you send an HTTP request message you are getting a response message it's an application protocol used to provide web content to browsers it uses port 80 and secure one uses port 443 which makes use of uh, the SSL and TLS hypervisor is a software or firmware that creates and manages virtual machine on the host hardware for example if you see I have a hardware resource there's a host operating system on this there's a hypervisor and this is also a hypervisor so if you see what hypervisor does like this is type 1 there's no host operating system so what hypervisor does so it is going to manage those resources with the guest machines in case of virtualization IP config command it is a deprecated Linux command tool used to gather information about the IP configuration of the network adapter nowadays we have a different protocol here but you are supposed to get IP address with the help of IF config implicit deny firewall access rule so we have already seen about explicit deny so there's also implicit so it is configured so if you don't have implicit deny you have to configure 
a rule that's what we call implicit deny so firewall ACR rule configured by default to block any traffic not matched by previous rules infrastructure as a code so what you do you create infrastructure with the help of a code provisioning architecture in which deployment of resources is done by a scripted automation and orchestration like you know you define the infrastructure with the help of a code instant secure it is it is a media sanitization command built into HDDs and SSDs that are self encrypted that work by erasing the encryption key leaves a uh, remnant unrecoverable so this is one of the best techniques or one of the good technique to sanitize or to remove data permanently what do you do you just delete the key when you delete the key it will be very difficult to recover the data it's one of the techniques which is being used to remove the data ICMP is internet control message protocol it is IP level protocol for reporting errors and status information supporting the function of troubleshooting utilities such as ping like you know when you do a ping it is going to send those ICMP packets IMAP is application protocol providing a means for client to access and manage email messages stored in a mailbox or remote server it uses port 143 while secure one uses 993 so when you receive the emails uh, from from that server you make use of IMAP protocol or POP IOT is Internet of Things devices that can report state and configuration data and be remotely managed over the IP network like you know you see IOT where all the devices will have IP address they are able to communicate with each other so those devices can talk to each other those are sensors <coughs> they have IP addresses IPsec in case of IPv6 it is uh, it is going to make those packets very secure so it is very important in IPv6 but in IPv4 it is being used nowadays to secure those packets so network protocol suite used to secure data through authentication and encryption as data travels across the network or the internet like through th you, you are just going to create a tunnel here ISP is your internet service provider it provides internet connectivity and web service to its customers IDS you know it's an intrusion detection system it's an appliance or software that uses passive hardware sensor to monitor traffic on a specific segment of the network this is also called network intrusion detection system or host intrusion detection system if it's for a host untrusted traffic goes through the firewall goes through the router then you have host IDS IPS you, you have or, or it could be a network based IDS IPS or host based IDS IPS IPS is intrusion prevention system it's a security appliance or software that combines detection capabilities with the function that can actively block so it's also going to prevent so IDS will send you an alert so you're, you, are, you as an admin is going to then check what to do with that but IPS will simply block that it's going to take action by itself IP is a Linux command used to gather information about IP configuration of the network or configure the network like you know IP help IP helper so we, we discussed you know as a relay agent so if you send those DCP <coughs> command to a server which is in a different network you make use of this like you know IP helper add and give it an address saying that this is this is your uh, server command set in a router to support ACP relay and other broadcast forwarding functionality IP scanner is a utility that can probe a network to detect which IP address are used by host like you know you scanning those IPs it will let you know which IP is being used by which service or which service is running on that particular IP IP command when you do IP config you uh, are going to get information about the IP address subnet mask and default gateway jitter is a delay variation in the time it takes for a signal to reach the recipient jitter manifests itself as an inconsistent rate of packet delivery if a packet loss or delay is excessive then noticeable audio or video problems are expressed by users so variation of delay like you know you are sending packet 1 2 and 3 so here if you see it's going to receive first packet 3 then 1 and then 2 jumbo frame is a very big size frame so ethernet frame with a payload which is larger than 1500 maybe 9000 bytes so you take advantage of those uh, uh, those those uh, cat cables which have very high speed in uh, gigabytes Kerberos is a single sign-on authentication and authorization service that is based on time-sensitive ticket granting system so what it does it does single sign-on it just authenticates you only once based on that you are going to get a ticket and then you'll be given a token 
so if you need as access to other server so you'll be given a different token now you are not getting authenticated you are being authenticated only once and you are being authorized now latency is the time it takes for a signal to reach the recipient so if you see the difference jitter is the variation latency is the actual delay a video application can support a latency of up to 80 ms while typically latency on internet can reach up to 1000 milliseconds at peak time latency is a particular problem for a two-way application such as VoIP and online conferencing time it takes for a request to go from client to server and back to client layer 3 capable switch uh, if you remember I discussed this is a layer 2 switch which works at the data link layer and there's also a layer 3 switch which works at the network layer so it and it works like a router not fully as a router but like a router switch appliance capable of IP routing between VLAN subnets using hardware optimized path selection and forwarding least privilege is a basic principle of security stating that something should be allocated the minimum necessary rights privilege or information to perform its role also referred to as principle of least privilege <coughs> remove restrict privilege only necessary systems and applications give only the access what that employee needs at that time LDAP is your lightweight direct access protocol is a network protocol used to access network directory database which store information about authorized users and their privilege as well as other organizational information load balancer is a type of switch router or software that's going to distribute that client request between different resources such as communication links or similarly configured servers this provides fault tolerance and improve the throughput like you know you have a load balancer it's going to balance you know one request goes here one goes here it's going to balance based on the algorithm LAN is a local area network it's a network scope restricted to a single geographical location and owned or managed by a single organization LC is a uh, local connector for uh, fiber optic. It's a small form factor push pull fiber optic connector available in simplex and duplex version. Long term evolution is a fourth generation wireless standard that provides increased network capacity and speed for cell phones and other cellular devices with 3G. Loopback adapter is used to verify the integrity of a network interface by checking that it can receive a signal generated by itself. So you send a re request and you receive the request. Loopback address, when you ping this IP, it's a loopback address, so you're just testing your TCP IP. IP address by which a host can address itself over any available interface. MAC address, so this is your MAC address, when you check your MAC table, data stored on a switch that keeps track of MAC addresses associated with each port as the switch uses a type of CAM this is sometimes called CAM table or you know this is a MAC table <coughs> which has MAC address connected to which port MAC filtering applying an access control list to a switch or access point so that only client with the approved address can connect so what you do for example this is authorized okay you already configured that in a router so when you try to send a request to the router, router says yes you are authorized because I already know about you. Now when there is some other guy trying to connect, so this router will not recognize because this MAC address is not cloned in this router. Malware is a software that serves a malicious purpose typically installed without user's consent, uh, consent like you know ransomware blackmails you, spyware seals your data, hardware is going to spam you with ads, worm is going to spread across computers. Trojan is going to sneak malware onto your PC. Botnet is turn your PC into a zombie. So these are different malware, malicious software. MTD is maximum tolerable downtime. The amount of time mission business process can be disrupted without causing significant harm to the organization. So what is your maximum time? Like you know, if you see here, this is the RPO deals with you know how much backup you have. So this is a disaster. So if you took backup here, so that means you need this much data. RTU is how much time it needs for you to recover but MTD is what's the maximum tolerable like you know if you are not recovering in this time your business might fail so this is work recovery time you know where you test you need to recover in this time and then you need to test everything maximum transmission unit so how much a channel can accept 
it's a size and byte of a frames payload if the payload cannot be encapsulated within a single frame at a later link here it should be fragmented that's what we discussed you know what's the use of fragmentation so MTU what's the maximum size it can accept so this is your mean time between failures for example there's a failure here there's a failure here so what's the time between those failures that predict what's the expected time between the failures mean time to uh, failure so average time a device or component is expected so what is what is the mean time like you know I am working continuously I'm recording this video for one hour maybe I might fail after one hour I don't have that much energy or maybe after two hours so that's my mean time to failure so how much time I'm working okay how long I'm working good mean time to repair how much time it takes you for example there's a failure now it takes some time for you to repair this so metric representing what's the average time for a device or component to be repaired replaced or otherwise recovered from failure you need to calculate all of that for the critical components that's where you can check what is your uh, MTD or you know uh, WRT and uh, what's your uh, RPU and RTU this is your mechanical transfer register check it's a small form factor duplex fiber optic connector with a snap in design MAC address is a hardware address that uniquely identify each network interface at layer 2 it's a 48 bit hexadecimal which has two parts one is the originally unique identifier which is going to identify the organization and then they have their own unique number media converter is going to convert media like you know if you have two different media you need a media converter it's a physical device that translates signal received over one media for transmission over a different media maybe through uh, this Ethernet and then you transfer that through fiber optic memorandum of understanding is usually a preliminary or exploratory agreement to express an intent to work together that is not legal binding and does not involve exchange of money maybe a university is signing an MOU with some college so they are working together the, the intent is to work together this is a mesh topology a topology often used in van where each device has in theory a point to point connection with every device in practice only the more important devices are directly connected so in practice there's a partial mesh there is no full mesh each device connected to every other devices like this device is connected to this 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 and this metropolitan area network is a class of network that covers the area of a city that is not more than 10 kilometers a man is larger than land but smaller than van but it can operate at speed that are comparable with land mission essential function is a business or organizational activity that is too critical to be deferred for anything more than a few hours so something which is very important like you know leadership staff and all that you know these things here multicast is one to a group so you're going to send a packet to all those who are a part of that group so a packet address to a selection of hosts which are belonging to that multicast group one to a group MFA is a multi-factor authentication it's an authentication scheme that requires user to present at least two different factors something you know for example you know your pin and password something you own you own a phone something you are like biometric so if you type your password I am not able to uh, recognize you I'll say okay please type the code which I have sent to your phone or please use your fingerprint because your password with your password I cannot recognize you so this is your multimeter it is electrical meter capable of measuring voltage resistance and current voltage readings can be used to determine whether for example a power supply unit is functioning correctly resistance reading can be used to determine whether a fuse or network cable is functioning properly you get those that reading on on, on that you know uh, on, on, on that multi, uh, multimeter multimode and single mode so what is multimode it is going to take multiple signals here single mode will take only one signal fiber optic cable typically it's going to use lead this might use a laser surface emitting laser optics and graded user optical multiple type for core size and bandwidth it's going to carry multiple signals it works for a short distance but mainly used in broadband you know where it's going to carry multiple signals multi multi in multiple out so this is a wireless technology that uses multiple transmitters and receivers to transfer more data at the same time or wireless product with 802.1 support memo technology help allow 802.1 n to reach higher speed than products without 802.1 n 
you know multiple in multiple out neighbor discovery protocol or simply neighbor discovery is a protocol of uh, IPv6 where you know it's going to discover its neighbor like you know we had those hello packets so it uses neighbor, neighbor discovery like this is the source this is the destination discovering the neighbor so NetFlow is a Cisco developed means of reporting network flow con uh, information to a structured database. NetFlow allows a better understanding of IP traffic flows as used by different network application and host. So you are going to get, you know, what's the source IP, what's the destination IP, and all those details about a particular traffic. Net state command. When you do a net state, what do you get? It's a cross-platform command tool to show network information on a machine running TCP/IP. Like you know, you'll be getting those. Uh, wh what are the connections which are set up? so what IP addresses your your machine is communicating with network access control is a general term for collected protocols policies and hardware that authenticate and authorize access to a network at device level so if you try to connect your device to a network it will either allow block or quarantine based on you know it needs to authenticate you NAT is a network address translation it's going to do a mapping of your private IP and public IPs so routing mechanism that conceals internal addressing scheme from the public internet by translating between a single public address on external side of a router and private or non-routable address internally so you can save also those public IPs and it also acts like a firewall because those guys from outside don't have access to internal machines network separation is where you enforce a security zone by separating a segment of network from access by rest of network this could be accomplished using firewalls or VPN or VLAN. A physically separate network or a host with no cabling or wireless link to other network is referred to as an air gap. Also referred to as segmentation or network segmentation or enforcement. NAT is a network uh, time protocol, application protocol allowing machines to synchronize to the same time clock that runs over UDP port 1, 2, 3. So if you need to synchronize with those atomic clocks, you make use of those NTP servers because they are always accurate. That's how your router switch will have a proper IP addressing. NIC teaming two or more NIC aggregated into a single channel link for fault tolerance and increased throughput, also known as NIC bonding. You know, you combine those two NICs. Combine multiple physical NIC cards into a single logical interface. Provide redundancy or load balancing. NMAP is an IP or port scanner used for topology, host service and OS discovery and enumeration. Like you know, you're just doing enumeration here, you're just going to see how many ports are running on this particular IP. ND is your non-disclosure agreement, agreement that stipulates that entities will not share confidential information, knowledge or material with unauthorized third parties. NS lookup, when you do NS lookup, hyphen type TX, so you're going to get the particular DNS details like text records so cross platform command for querying the DNS resource record on path attack is a man the middle attack attackers place themselves between two devices often a web browser and server and intercept or modify communication between the two attackers can then collect information as well as impersonate you know pretending to be you know I am that guy OSPF is open shortest path first. It's a dynamic routing protocol that uses a link state algorithm and a hierarchy topology. It's going to divide all that networking, uh, you know, area into multiple areas. This area zone, uh, area zero as backbone. Operational technology is a communication network designed to implement an industry control system rather than data networking for your, uh, you know, energy sectors and all that. So there are seven layers of OSM model, physical data network transport, session presentation application, this is a conceptual model which is created by ISO which enable diverse communication systems to communicate using protocols so what happens there were a lot of reasons why OSI came in but I would say if you follow OSI model you do a logical troubleshooting and they were mm, uh, earlier there were a lot of compatibility issues but with the help of OSI model you know what you design you you follow a standard packet sniffing is recording data from frame as they pass over network media using methods such as mirror or tap the device so you're getting a copy of all the data password policy is a security policy that promote user selection of strong password by specifying minimum length maximum length complexity and all you know so you're just clearing rules and you're just securing the password storage 
patch panel is uh, it provides a way to keep large number of cables organized enabling flexible connectivity into network hardware located in a data center or an access or wiring closet the most common type of patch panel is used within the organization's LAN you might have seen that in your data center peer-to-peer -peer is administration paradigm where any computer device may be configured to operate as a both server and a client so that's why we say peer-to-peer -peer. there's a client and server there's also peer-to-peer -peer. penetration testing is a test that uses active tool and security utilities to evaluate security by simulating an attack on the system a pen test will verify a threat exist then will actively test and bypass those controls and will finally exploit those vulnerabilities on the system this is also what we call pen test so there could be internal or external so they're just going to check what is the uh, how, if, if those controls are set properly what are the loopholes they, they uh, test them Personal area network is a close range networking usually based on Bluetooth or NFC allowing communication between personal devices like smartphones, laptops or printers. Phishing is an email based social engineering attack in which attacker sends email from supposedly reputable source such as a bank to try to exploit ex to try to elicit private information from the victim. Like if you see here attacker sends a phishing to the target victim is going to click on the phishing link and visits a fake site hacker collects the information and uses victim's credential to access that private information. PAC is your uh, physical access control system components and protocols that facilitate the centralized configuration and monitoring of security mechanism within the office and data centers like you know those access control systems and all that. Piggybacking is where you allow a threat actor to enter a site or control location without authorization so we stop that with the help of man trap or we, pro we pre protect that with the help of man trap ping command is a cross platform command tool for testing IP connectivity so you might have seen that you know when you ping you check the connectivity this is the plenum where you run a special cable so cable for use in building voids designed to be fire resistant and produce a minimal amount of smoke it burn because there's a lot of air running here so you need to design those those cables are particularly designed so they release less smoke and uh, they are called plenum cables point to point is a TCP IP protocol that is used to connect one computer to another computers use PPP to communicate over the telephone network or the internet a PPP connection exists when two systems physically connect through a telephone line you can use PPP to connect one system to another point to point topology is a networking uh, network that connects two hosts in a dedicated fashion for example if you were to configure a router in Miami Florida to connect and use resource on a network in Atlanta Georgia you would want to make sure you have a link between them that can support your needs ports whether TCP or UDP so if you see here what's the difference here between TCP and UDP it just makes a connection since in a three-way handshake this doesn't set up any connection in TCP and UDP application a unique number assigned to a particular application protocol server port are typically assigned a well-known or registered number while client ports are dynamic or ephemeral which are not permanent port mirroring is copying ingress or egress communication from one or more switch port to another so whatever traffic is flowing in your network you are just going to get a copy of that traffic with the help of port mirroring port scanner is a utility that can probe a host to enumerate the status of TCP UDP ports so you're just going to check those ports with port scanner port security is when you secure this port what will happen you will uh, configure the port saying that this is the authorized guy so please allow him and this is unauthorized guy so if he or anyone else is unauthorized only this guy is authorized because if someone is trying to bring some other PC it's just going to shut down this PC preventing a device attached to a switch port from communicating on a network unless it match a given MAC address or other protection profile post office protocol is also for receiving the mail application protocol that enable a client to download email message from server mailbox to a client or port TCP 110 or secure one is 995 PDU is your power distribution unit advanced strip socket that provides filter output voltage a managed unit supports remote administration power or ethernet so you're sending power over the ethernet specification allowing power to be supplied through a switch port and ordinary data cable to device such as VoIP and wireless device can draw about uh, 13 watt it is a power supply maybe you will be sending a power to your camera through this ethernet cable 
private key in symmetric encryption the private key is also known only the holder and is linked to but not derived from a public key distributed to those with which the holder wants to communicate securely a private key can be used to encrypt data that can be decrypted by the linked public key so it is a key pair private and public for example sender is going to send some plain text he is going to use a key to encrypt the data and he has to share that key with you so you can use this key to decrypt so this key is like you know private key is like your password and public key is like your email address you can share that with anyone no problem but password is like your private key protocol analyzer a network protocol analyzer is a tool used to monitor data traffic and analyze capture signals as they travel across communication channels like your wireshark PDU is a protocol data unit at every layer you have like you know these are bits frames packets segments at the OSM model so network protocol encapsulating a data payload from upper layer with header information so every layer is going to add its header for example this could be the header at the application layer okay so then presentation layer is going to add its own header so every layer is going to add its own information for that uh, for, for the other layer on the other side proxy server is a server that mediates the communication between a client and another server it can filter and often modify communication as well as provide caching services to improve performance also called forward proxy which is going to pro uh, protect those clients or a reverse proxy which is going to protect those servers PKI is a public key infrastructure it's a set of rules policies hardware software and procedures needed to create manage distribute use store and revoke digital certificates and manage public in uh, public encryption if you need a key you will apply to registration authority which is going to verify all the details it will ask certificate authority certificate authority is going to issue you a certificate it will also give you some sort of token so what it does it's going to give certificate to the validation authority now you need to present this token to the validation authority to be able to download that certificate public versus private address some addresses are designed for those on private networks only packet with source IP in public range are permitted to be forwarded over the internet packet with source IP from private range should be blocked at the internet gateway or forwarded using some sort of translation like that quality of service is a set of technologies that work on network to guarantee its ability to dependently run high priority applications and traffic under limited network capacity quality of service technologies accomplish this by providing differentiated handling and capacity allocation to specific flows in the network traffic like this is the input so red is given more priority violet is given medium priority and bl black is given low priority with the help of quality of service RFID is a radio frequency ID it uses electromagnetic field to automatically identify and track tag attached to object RFID system consists of tiny radio uh, transponder a radio receiver and a transmitter you might have seen those tags in your cloth when you go to a shopping mall uh, so if you take a cloth that's why it's going to play a, a, a sort of alarm because if you forget to remove that tag ransomware is a malware that tried to extort money from the victim by <coughs> encrypting the victim's files and demanding payment recovery point objective is the maximum of da data that can be lost before causing some harm like you know we have seen how much time you have to recover after that you have a work recovery time and after that you have maximum tolerable downtime so registered jack connector is a standard telecommunication network interface for connecting voice and data equipment to a service provider provided by a local exchange carrier or a local data center like you know this is your RJ11 this is your RJ45 so RJ11 is used for the telephone and RJ45 is used for your uh, RJ45 is used for your tel uh, for your internet remote authentication dial in user service radio service is a AAA protocol used to manage remote and wireless authentication infrastructure so there's a radius client and also there's a radius server remote desktop RDP is a remote desktop protocol so what you do with the help of RDP there's a client and there's also a server so with the help of client and server what you do here so you're just trying to actually uh, connect from client to server it's an application protocol for operating a remote connection to a host using a geographical interface the protocol sends screen data from remote host to the client and transfer mouse 
and keyboard input from the client to the remote host it uses TCP port 3389 so like you know if you see here from this computer you can control the server maybe you are an admin repeater is a layer 1 device that regenerate and retransmit signal to overcome media distance limitations reservation DHCP reservation when you use DHCP IP reservation you are telling your Wi-Fi network to assign the same IP address to a specific device whenever that device connect to your network resource record it is an A triple A is it's an A triple A uh, sorry chord A record maps a domain name to the IP address of a computer hosting the domain an AAA record is used to find the IP address of a computer connected to an internet from a name so you have some other records for example you have A it supports IP as a value you have C name it supports name as values cannot be used for uh, you know route domains or uh, NICT or uh, you know these domains or alias so these are some records in, in, in with, 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 with respect to your DNS ring topology so in a ring topology all of the computers are connected in a circle the ring compromise a series of point-to-point -point links between each device signals cross from device to device in a single direction with the signal regenerated at each device risk is a likelihood and impact or consequence of a threat actor ex exercising a vulnerability so when we say something is risky but the potential for harm rogue access point is a wireless access, access point that has been enabled on network without authorization invalid use right role based access control based on your role what access you have so access control model where resource are protected by ACL that are managed by administrators and that provide user permissions based on job functions so this is a rollback, ca rollback cable what do you do you just turn it around so here pin 1 here it becomes pin 8 becomes pin 1 cables used to connect the serial port on a host or a modem to the console port on a network also called console cable Route command is a cross-platform command tool used to display and manage the routing tables on a Windows or Linux host. A router is intermediate system working at network layer capable of forwarding packets around logical network of different layer 1 and layer 2. A routing loop is a troubleshooting issue where a packet is forwarded between routers in a loop until the TTL is going to expire, time to leave. A routing table is a set of rules often viewed in a table format that is used to find whether data packets are traveling over internet network will be directed table is usually stored inside the RAM such as you know this looks like a routing table you know which route to follow this is an example <coughs> sanitization is a process of thoroughly and completely removing data from a storage medium so that file remnant cannot be recovered Scalability is a property by which a computing environment is able to gracefully fulfill its ever increasing need like you know whatever need ha you have it should be able to adapt to that need. Scope is a range of consecutive IP addresses in the SAM subnet that a DSP server can lease to clients. DMZ is your demilitarized zone it's a uh, or it's, 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 it's also called screen subnet. Segment isolated from rest of private network by one or more firewalls that accept connections from the internet or designated port this is also called DMC secure arrays is a subset of instant secure arrays where crypto arrays option has been disabled thus there is no longer an instant arrays option sanitized command is still supported but only with overwrite or block arrays option secure shell is a cryptographic network protocol for operating network services securely or unsecure network it is most notable application or remote login and command line execution SSH applications are based on client server architecture and connecting an SSH client with a server sorry <coughs> I know it's getting a little bigger but I'll just finish everything here in one in one go SSL is a secure socket layer it's an encryption based internet security protocol it was first developed by Netscape in 1995 for the purpose of ensuring privacy authentication and data integrity in internet communication SSL is the predecessor to the modern TSL TLS like uh, HTTP is insecure so this is encrypted HTTPS 
same is your solution that provides real time or near real time uh, analysis of security alerts generated by network hardware and applications SLE is the service level agreement that sets the expectation between the service provider and the customer and describe the product or service to be delivered the single point of contact for end user problems and the matrix by which effectiveness of the process is monitored and approved STP is the shielded twisted pair. It's a special kind of copper telephone and LAN cable used in some business installation. It adds outer covering or shield that functions as a ground to ordinary twisting. So it's going to add some extra shielding or you have unshielded twisted pair. Shoulder surfing is attack that describes a situation where attacker can physically view the device screen and keyboard to obtain personal information. It is one of the few attack methods requiring the attacker to be physically close the victim to succeed or you might also use a uh, binoculars or some mobile phones to uh, uh, to zoom in from a distance show route on Cisco route the show route is used to display IP information a router provides additional route information like you know how the route was learned how long the route has been in the table which interface to use to get the destination SNMP is your simple network management protocol. It is for collecting and organizing information about your devices on the network and for modifying that information to change device behavior. Like you know, you send the query to those devices saying, hey, are you doing good? Are you doing fine? Or they can send you a trap. So there's MIB, manage inf management information base, which stores all that information. Single mode fiber is a fiber octave cable, typically that uses laser diodes and narrow core construction to support high bandwidth or distance of over 5 km. SSO is single sign-on authentication technology that enable a user to authenticate once and receive authorization for multiple servers. We discussed that with respect to Kerberos. Site survey is a document uh, documentation about a location for the purpose of building an ideal wireless infrastructure. It often contains optimum location for wireless antenna access point placement to provide the required coverage for client and identifying source of interference small office home office is used to refer to a network device for small scale LAN SMTP is to send you a mail okay or port 25 and secure one is 587 for receiving you have pop and IMF for sending you have SNMP SMTP sorry social engineering is activity where the goal is to use deception and tricky to convince unsuspecting users to provide sensitive data or to violate security guidelines. Socket is a combination of your port and IP. So with the help of port and IP, you will reach to the correct uh, server. On that server, you will reach to the correct process. This is what we call socket. Software service is cloud service model that fully provision, that, that provision fully developed application to the users, like you know, Google and all. These are examples of software as a service. So you are not designing the software but your cloud provider is going to design a software for you. STP is spanning tree protocol. It is a layer 2 network protocol used to prevent looping with a network topology. It was created to avoid the problem that arise within when computers exchange data online. Like you know preventing those loops which we see in layer 2. Uh, those, those loops which we discussed. At, at layer 3 we have uh, we, at layer 3 we have a, 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 a TTL. Speed is the amount of data that can be transferred over a network connection in a given amount of time, typically measured in bits or bytes per second. Transfer rate is also described variously as data rate, bit rate, connection speed, transmission speed or bandwidth. Transfer rates are often quoted as a peak maximum theoretical value, sustained actual throughput is often considerably less. Spoofing is an attack technique where the threat actor disguises their identity or impersonates to be, pretends to be someone. Spoof. If there could be a max spoof, there could be IP spoof, even port spoofing happens. Store topology is a type of network topology in which every device in network is individually connected to a central node. Static route is where you configure the route. So a route is static route is a route that manually inserted into a routing table. Static route appear in the routing table as S and are often used when there is only one path to reach destination as a backup route. Otherwise you go for dynamic route. SAN is a storage network, network dedicated to provisioning storage resource, typically consists of storage uh, devices and servers. So what do you do? Like a LAN, you provide those uh, different storage available to those users with the help of some, uh, you know, uh, fiber optic cables, you just connect them. So a user thinks like, you know, there's a big storage, a big ocean here. 
at the back end you just connect those devices straight tip is a vernet style twisted and a lock connector for fiber optic straight through cable is where one side is this other side is also same SC is a subscriber connector it's a push pull connector used with fiber optic cabling SCADA is supervisory control and data acquisition in a, is a system of software and hardware that allow industrial organization to control industrial process locally or at remote location monitor together and process real-time data like you know these are your SCADA systems switch is intermediate system used to establish contention free network segment at layer 2 it understands MAC address at data and clear syslog is application protocol and event logging format and uh, enabling different appliances and software applications to transmit log or event record to a centralized server it makes use of port 514 tap is like your <coughs> like your port mirror it's going to get a copy of all the data within your network it's inserted in a cable to copy frame for analysis tcp dump is a command line packet sniffing utility like a wireshark Telnet is application protocol supporting unsecured terminal emulation. So when you connect your server through the Telnet, it is not a secure one. You should use SSH. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Thin access point <coughs> which needs a controller. Thick access point doesn't need a controller. Thin access point needs a controller. Threat is a security. Threat is a malicious act that aims to corrupt or steal data or disrupt organization system or entire organization. A security event refers to the occurrence during which company data or its network may have been exposed. Throughput is the amount of data transfer supported by a link in typical condition. This can be measured in various ways with different software. Goodput is, oh, we discussed this, goodput is the actual useful data. Okay, this is the throughput, but goodput, throughput is the amount of data that is able to travel. But goodput, when you remove those overheads. TDR is a time domain reflector used to measure the length of cable run and are able to locate open and short circuit, sharp bands and other imperfection in cable that could affect performance. Time to leave is a counter field in IP field recording the number of hop a packet can make before being dropped. So every router is going to remove that hop. <coughs> Tune generator is used to identify one cable within a bundle by applying a signal they also called fox and horn so what do you do you just generate a tune and then you're going to see you're going to <coughs> if you have a bundle of cables you want to recognize a particular cable you make use of tone generator topology is a, a, is a kind of the arrangement either physical or logical of nodes and connections with the network it could be said that a topology explains how a network is physically physically connected and how the information network flows logically like you know this hybrid topology there's a bus topology there's a ring topology there's a star there's a mesh where everyone is connected everyone or tree topology trace route command is a diagnostic utility that trace the route taken by a packet as it hop to the destination on a remote network trace route is a windows implementation while a trace route runs on linux so here you, you use trace rt Traffic Shaper is appliance or software that enable admins to closely monitor network traffic and to manage that network traffic. The primary function of a Traffic Shaper is to optimize network media throughput to get to most from the available bandwidth, also called Bandwidth Shaper, like you know this here. <coughs> it is going to shape that traffic. TCP is a transmission control protocol, so it just uh, sets up a connection. When you make use of TCP, it will use a three-way handshake. SYN goes to server, server will send SYNAC. Then you send ACK. <coughs> so what it does? Connection oriented. It gives you a guarantee. TFTP is a trivial file transfer protocol. It's a simplified alternative to FTP that provides no authentication and is often used to transfer configuration to and from the network device. Troubleshooting methodology is a structured approach to problem solving using identification, what's the theory of cause, testing, planning, implementation, verifying and documenting. So you follow a standard you follow those logical steps trunk so you send VLAN traffic through a trunk for example you want to send a VLAN traffic so this VLAN is connected to this switch this VLAN is and, and these VLANs are connected to this switch but they are the same VLAN 20 you need to send the traffic so you will send through the trunk this is your trunk 
backbone link established between switch and router to transfer frame from multiple VLANs. Tunneling is a way to move packet from one network to another. It works through encapsulation, wrapping a packet inside another packet. <coughs> Networking layer. Tune XL. It's a medium, so it has two axes, similar to coax, but with two inner axes. Unicast. Okay, so we are uh, about to complete. Uh, it has been almost two hours, so we should be done in two hours. That was our, what I estimated. A packet addressing to a single host. If the host is not on the local segment, the packet must be sent through one or more router. So one to one, right? Unicast. Multicast is one to group. Broadcast is one to all. UPS is an interrupted power supply, battery power device that supplies AC power that an electronic device can use in the event of power failure. Unshielded twisted pair is a media type that uses copper conductor arranged in pair that are twisted to reduce interference, typically cables are four or two pair. User diagram protocol is the TCP IP suite operating at a transport layer. It is connectionless, no guarantee. But sometimes we make use of this when we need a speed. Vendor management policies and procedure to identify vulnerabilities and ensure security of the supply chain. So you establish your goal, you send out bids for vendors, you select the vendor, you define the terms and you monitor the performance and you renew their contract. Virtual IP is an IP that is assigned to multiple applications that reside on a single server, multiple domain names or multiple servers rather than being assigned to a specific single server or network. Incoming data are sent to the VIP address and routed to actual network interfaces. <coughs> VLAN is a virtualized connection that connects multiple devices and network nodes from different lands into a, a single logical network. Like you know, th th these these guys here, like this is a VLAN 10. Okay, so these computers, like you know, these are a part of one VLAN. These ports are part of one VLAN. These ports are part of one VLAN. Virtual private network is a secure tunnel created between two endpoints through an unsecured transport protocol. So what you do, you set up a VPN connection so you protect the data from attackers. VoIP is voice for internet protocol also called <coughs> IP telephony is a method and group of technology for the delivery of voice communication and multimedia over internet protocol networks such as internet. Vulnerability is a weakness. Every system has a loophole or weakness. That's what we call weak, uh, vulnerability. That could be triggered accidentally or exploited intentionally to cause a security breach. So what you do here, you know, you just take care of all of those things, patches and all that. Vulnerability assessment is where you check a system security and ability to meet compliance requirement based on the configuration state of the system as represented by information collected from system where you do vulnerability testing, analysis, risk assessment, remediation and all. Wide Data Network is a technology that connects your office data centers, cloud applications and cloud storage together. It is called Wide Data Network because it spans beyond a single building or large campus to include multiple locations which are spread across specific geographical areas or event or even the world. <coughs> so I'm just moving a little bit so you guys can just pause it and if I'm being a little bit fast because I wanted to complete all of them like there are more than 300 terminologies. I want it to complete in two hours. So I am a little bit fast sometimes, but you can just pause it and go through all those terminologies because I have written them in a very simple English. <coughs> Wire map tester is going to transmit signal through each wire in a cable to see if connected to the correct pin at each end. This tester can detect all problems that render a cable run inappropriate. Wireless and controller is used with other device to help monitor and manage access point in bulk by network admin in tandem with lightweight access point protocol. The network operators uh, operation center can feel the monitoring of lightweight access in large quantities. Like you know, you you control those thin access points. <coughs> wireless LAN is a wireless computer network that links two or more device using wireless communication to form a local area network within a limited area such as home, school, computer lab or campus or office or building. Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer or an application that captures packets from a network connection such as from your computer to uh, your home or office or internet. Packet is a name given to a discrete unit of data in a typical network while Wireshark is most often used by... So this is a sniffer where you capture those packets. It gives you details about those packets with respect to the OSM model and what is inside those packets. It's very difficult to understand it for the first time, but once you get used to Wireshark, it's very nice tool. Wiring diagram 
is a network diagram is a visual representation of a computer or telecommunication network it shows the components that make up a network and how they interact like you know router switch and all that sometimes attackers might draw it or you might draw it as an admin to understand <laughs> attackers draw it to plan their attack work recovery time we discussed that you know the time which you need for testing so it is the maximum tolerable amount of time a DR team has to verify that system and data production are online and operational it's a phase after mission critical data and operations are restored when the organization must focus on getting back to business as usual so you'll be testing those those uh, ser servers zero trust is a strategic approach to cybersecurity that secures an organization by eliminating implement impl uh, set trust and continuously validating trust so what you do you no more trust you just gain that trust maybe based on the infrastructure based on that data based on the network which user is using that what at what time from what network which application you are just going to verify everything you are not assuming Zero day is a vulnerability in a software that is unpatched by the developer or attacker that exploited such a vulnerability. For example, Microsoft release a operating system. Okay, so you as a developer find there's a bug. You report that bug to Microsoft. Now it will take some time for them to release a patch. So whatever attacks happen before the patch is your zero day. All right. <coughs> so we are just done with all the terminology. Uh, I have done it. Uh, it, it in, in two hours so we completed everything in two hours so it was actually a kind of uh, a terminology which is very important for any exam we need to go through the terminology so in this what we did is we just have gone through the terminology uh, for your let me just close it so we have gone through the terminology for our network plus okay so similar to that i'm uh, drawing I'm going to cover the terminology for security plus also this is for the latest exam from CompTIA network plus n10008 so i have seen for CompTIA exams i did network plus i did security plus i did it fundamentals i did a plus uh, I, i'll be doing core 2 and then i'll do maybe cloud plus and all other other exams but i have seen terminology is very important so that's where i felt you know i've just gone through all the terminologies i have just collected you know all the definition with the diagram so that's where it has been very helpful to me so i thought of sharing that with you all so it's going to be helpful for all of those who are preparing for network plus i'm also going to come up with, uh, with uh, come up with the same terminology for other courses maybe security plus next and then for other courses so please do like subscribe and share I have recorded other videos also related to what are the certifications I have done so how you can do those certifications or what are uh, the important points for every exam maybe I'll be recording some other videos also maybe some practice questions after that but first let me go through the terminology first uh, if you have any comments please let me know or if you want me to record any other relevant topics which you are interested in please do let me know so this video is a little bigger like two hours continuously I've been recording this just to help you guys so please do like subscribe and share so keep motivating me so I'll just come up with uh, other topics which are very interesting so learning teaching so learn from each other we learn and we teach we grow we share and that's how we care so sharing is caring right thank you so much I'll see you in some other topic so thanks a lot